Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA Network Plus certification training course, the online training course with a heaping side of goodness. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk about LAN technologies. We've discussed in previous modules all about the wide area network. In this one, we're going to discuss very specific local area network technologies. So we're going to go through what Ethernet is, and then we're going to go through a number of flavors of Ethernet, from 10 base T all the way up to 10 G base T, and what those are. We'll also talk about in those LAN properties what we can expect to see on a local area network and exactly how they work. Before we get into describing the specifics of individual local area network types, let's talk about the properties that we would expect to see on those. One that you'll hear referred to quite often in Ethernet is something called collision sense multiple access with collision detection. And this means that the stations on the network are listening for something called a collision. They're trying to send traffic out, but they don't want to send traffic out at the same time somebody else is sending traffic, because if that happens, the signals are going to connect with each other. They are going to collide with each other, and neither side will be able to understand what happens because you've now got corrupted data on the wire. Uh, when those two stations talk at once, we refer to them as collisions. But what they really are is a normal function of Ethernet. It's kind of a bad name because it sounds something awful. A, coll a collision has occurred. You don't want to collide. But in actuality, Ethernet is designed to collide with each other in half duplex mode and be able to react with that whenever that happens. It's part of the standard way that Ethernet operates. Now you also have within Ethernet, really many networking technologies, something called a broadcast. Broadcasts are very important for operations of networks because what you do is one station, when it needs to communicate with the world, it doesn't send individual packets to every single device on the network to inform them of what's going on. It sends one packet out that happens to be a special kind of packet called a broadcast. And that broadcast is destined for every device on the subnet. It has a special address on it. And as soon as every device on the network sees that packet, it knows that it's not specifically addressed to it, but it knows it's a broadcast. So it grabs that packet and takes the accordant action for what happens to be inside of that packet. So very important that we have broadcasts on our network. There's another concept with LANs called bonding, where you can take multiple LAN connections and bond them together so they look like a much faster logical connection. We see this very common with gig Ethernet connections. So instead of connecting two switches with one gigabit Ethernet connection, you connect it with two or four separate gigabit Ethernet connections and get a lot more throughput between those devices. There's a standard out from the IEEE called IEEE 802.3 AD. And that is a link aggregation standard so that all devices could take advantage of some of this bonding. Ethernet itself is a standard that's been around for quite some time. The, the idea was that you would have this luminiferous ether. And this luminiferous ether was a way that was first described to understand as the Earth is moving through space, how light was hitting the Earth. And that light was being transported to us through this luminiferous ether. Such a great idea. It turned out to be wrong, but it was a great idea. So, But the name stuck. It was nice to be able to have that same concept in networking where you're throwing packets out to the world and you're able to grab them through this Ethernet. Today, it is the most popular networking technology in the world, bar none. Everybody's using Ethernet. It is nearly a universal standard on local area networks, and it's extremely common wherever you might go in the world. There are many different kinds of Ethernet. Through the years, Ethernet has changed quite a bit. This is a network card that has three Ethernet ports on it, an AUI port, a BNC port, and an RJ45 port. And it's that way just because Ethernet has been able to be provided to the end user in so many different ways that these older network cards really were able to interoperate with many different kinds of Ethernet. Today, modern Ethernet uses almost exclusively twisted pair cable, copper cable, or fiber connections. You really don't see much of these odd AUI ports anymore or the older uh, coax BNC connections. Almost everything copper-wise is over RJ45, and there are many of the fiber connections these days running Ethernet at the 110 and even higher speed Ethernets. We'll go back a little bit with Ethernet, and we'll talk about 10 base T. 
10 base T, if we break down what this name really stands for, 10 stands for the bandwidth going through the network, 10 megabits per second. That's always our speed is that first number we have in there. And then you have this name base. Base is short for baseband. A baseband network is one that uses a single frequency across the entire medium. Whenever it sends traffic out, it's always on that frequency. When it's received, it's always on that frequency. And there's nothing else using the medium other than this technology, other than the Ethernet. So there's no other, other signals on the line. There's no other frequencies in use. It's only and reserved for this particular kind of topology. The T side of this stands for twisted pair. If uh, you look at Ethernet networks, they've run over coax, they've run over fiber. And if you see a T, you know it's always going to be this RJ45 or some other kind of twisted pair type connection. 10 base T was interesting as a twisted pair technology that it used one of the first standards that we had for twisted pair, which was a category three cable, which means we could extend Ethernet with these 10 megabits per second as far as 100 meters. That's quite a long ways in many environments. If we needed to go farther than that, then we needed to extend it in other ways, either by repeating the signal or perhaps by putting in fiber. Well, 10 megabit Ethernet was great, but we wanted faster Ethernet. We wanted to go up to 100 megabit speeds, and so we created something called 100 base TX. This stood for what we called at the time fast Ethernet. Even today, we talk about fast Ethernet as being that 100 megabit Ethernet. It used a new category of cabling called Category 5, or these days Category 5E. It's just twisted pair, unshielded copper cables going through the environment. And again, we had that maximum cable length of 100 meters. There is a different kind of 100 megabit that ran over fiber called 100 base FX. This pair of optical fiber could either be multimode or single mode. And the multimode fiber allowed us to go up to 400 meters in half duplex, but almost everybody runs in full duplex over these connections, which means over multimode fiber, we can go up to two kilometers with our ethernet. So if we need to extend this across a very long campus or perhaps to another building, that's one way to do it. If you need to go even further, put it on single mode fiber. You can go up to more than two kilometers over single mode connections with this 100 megabit running at full duplex. Soon after 100 megabit Ethernet came out, we wanted faster speed, so we came out with Gigabit Ethernet, or Giggy. Gigabit Ethernet first ran on a couple of different fiber and cable types. This copper cable type was called 1000 base T. Again, 1000 being our megabits per second, base being baseband, and T being our twisted pair copper cable. Here we have Gigabit Ethernet over Category 5 twisted pair cable, and we usually see this over Category 5E or Category 6 these days. What's interesting about this Gigabit Ethernet standard is it uses all four pairs of the cable, which is not the way that is used in 100 megabit or even in 10 megabit. So here we're using every single one of those wires inside of it. But if you look at it as a human being, you look at the outside of it, it looks exactly the same cable. It's the same Category 5E or Category 6 cable you could use for those. Just remember that when you're using 1000 base T, you're using all of the pairs within that. If you want to use fiber, you could run a standard called 1000 base X. There's different standards of fiber to, to be able to run with. One is 1000 base LX, which uses a long wavelength laser. Uh, we can go over long distances, over five kilometers with that. If you're running gigabit ethernet over a short wavelength laser, it is the 1000 base XX the Sierra X-Ray standard, it will run about 550 meters. So even with this fiber, we're still able to go over long distances, much longer than we're able to do with the copper. The latest popular Ethernet implementations are over fiber running at 10 gigabits per second. So this is extremely fast Ethernet than the 10 megabits per second that we saw in an earlier description with 10 base T. This 10 G base, 10 gig base dash SR stands for short range. So again, we have our 10 gigabit per second, our base baseband communication over short range. And this uses multimode fiber, which is really what our short range is really talking about. So we can go about 300 meters with the right kind of fiber. Some older types of fiber might go as far as 80 meters. So if we're implementing 10 gigabit ethernet in our environments, Sometimes we can't use the existing fiber. We have to have already thought about that, or we have to put in new fiber for that to go those 300 meters. There is a long range standard for 10 gig fiber called 10G base LR, 
which uses single mode. So again, that idea of single mode going further makes sense that that would be for your long range communications. And this can really go long distances, 10 kilometers all the way to 25 kilometers with this standard. There's also an extended range of 10 gig over fiber. The 10 G base ER is an extended range, again, using single mode fiber, but the technology in that is going all the way to 40 kilometers. And usually you have devices like this on both ends. Usually this type and speed of gigabit ethernet connectivity isn't connecting to an end station. Usually that type over fiber is going through switches and routers that are designed to run at those speeds. But what if you could take that concept of running at 10 gigabit ethernet and put it on the WAN? Well, that was already thought about when we began implementing these 10 gig technologies. So we came up with these standards, the 10 G base SW, LW, and EW. And if you recall the standards we were looking at with our short, long, and extended hauls, this is the same thing except it has W on the end to stand for WAN. So this allows us to take 10 gig ethernet and put it into the WAN running on either a Sonnet connection. In the United States, we use Sonnet. Other types of networks around the world for wide area networks use something called SDH, which is very similar to Sonnet. There are differences, and it stands for synchronous digital hierarchy. But it's the same three standards we had there as taking those same fiber and distance standards from our short, our long, and our extended range and just sticking them into a WAN connection that could then be sent out over Sonnet. Really genius. And we, if we plan this well above, well ahead of time, we can start implementing hardware that's going to be able to support it over the WAN. So we don't need E1s, we don't need T1s, we don't need T3s. We can simply put it in our gig Ethernet, send it out to the WAN, and it magically appears on the other side. Well, there are certainly some server communications that might want to use 10 gig over copper connections. You're in a data center. You don't want to use the fiber, which is more expensive. Just plug in 10 gig over copper. And there is a standard for that called 10 G base T. This uses twisted pair cables. Doesn't go quite as far over CAT6 as you would expect with the slower speed Ethernet. You can only go 55 meters. Uh, this CAT6A will go 100 meters. And this is an example of one of the cards that you could put into a server or into a desktop machine and be able to run those high speed 10 gig connections directly into those devices. Let's review what we've learned about some of those LAN technologies. Our first is, what network control protocol does half duplex Ethernet use? There's a network control protocol for half duplex Ethernet, and that's called Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Detection, CSMA CD. And with full duplex, there is no collision. You have people who can talk and send at the same time. So the only time you really have this CSMA CD technology in use is when it is in and half duplex Ethernet communication. The next question, what cable type does 100 base TX use? 100 base TX, well, we know that there is a certain cable specific to 100 base TX. We see the T there, so there must be twisted pair cabling there. And to go at 100 megabit per second, we know we at least have to have category 5. Our last question is, what is a common maximum distance for 10 gig base dash LR? And if you recall, that is our long range is what that LR stands for. That means we can go distances anywhere from 10 kilometers perhaps even as far as 25 kilometers, as long as we have the right kind of fiber and the right kind of hardware on both ends. That covers what we need to know about LAN technology types. We've looked at all of these different Ethernet flavors, and we've looked at what some of those different properties are for different pieces of network technologies on our local area networks. If you'd like to watch many more of our free Network Plus videos, participate in our message boards, and much more, you can visit our website, freenetworkplus.com.